<laughs> Chef Buck here, and today we're gonna to cook up a balone. It's a round thing, and it's called a balone, but it's plantain. So it's this right here, and I've got two plantains, green unripe plantains, and I've already got them peeled and cooked. It's very easy to peel them. You just do a slice down the side, you peel off the skin, you know, which can be a little tough to do, but just believe in yourself and you'll get through it. And then you want to put it in some water and then you just want to uh, bring it to a boil and then simmer it for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes until you can pass a fork through it until it's soft. It's like a potato. It's just like cooking a potato. But we're going to make these balloons, which are basically just balls of plantain. And it's, I mean, it's just tastes fantastic. We're in Ecuador, you know, if you're interested in Ecuador, or, you know, I'll have some links and you can check out our travel channel, but we've been eating a lot of plantains, and I really like these unripe plantains. I've had all different kinds of bologna. This is my own variation of a bologna recipe. I mean, it seems like every bologna recipe I've ever had has been a different variation, and at this point, I've had a lot of bologna. Even camera girls had a lot of bologna, or have you? Have you ever ordered bologna? I usually have a bite of yours. Yeah, you eat some of mine, but you usually get Tigrillo. But anyway, my plantain is already here, and this is still warm. I made a mistake and did my uh, Tigrillo recipe with the plantain cold, and that wasn't a good idea. But I'm going to go ahead and set my plantain aside, and I'm going to go ahead. I mean, hopefully you'll, you'll have a better gear than I got, but we're in an Airbnb, so we're kind of strapped for materials. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to take um, my, uh, my plantain water and put it in a coffee pot, which you don't have to do because you probably got something other than a coffee pot <laughs> that you can use, but I don't. And I need this pot and I might need this water. So I'm going to set that aside and reserve it. And I'm going to use my pot uh, to smash my plantain in. Ooh. Oh, but before I do this here, let me go ahead and start cooking some stuff too because we're gonna add a few things to the bologna. Now bologna, it's just a ball made of plantain. Um, and like I said, I've had all kinds. And the kind I like is the mixto. You know, so it's got a lot of different stuff in it. You know, I think the mixto, usually when they say mixto, they mean there's some meat in it. But it's all kinds of stuff. But I've had a bologna where it's just plantain and inside they insert a, uh, another ball of cheese. So it's like a ball of cheese inside a ball of plantain and eh. I think that one was deep fried too. Some of them are yeah. deep fried and some of them are seared like you're yes. gonna do. And I like the ones that are fried in a skillet. Uh, that one you're talking about was deep fried and we had another one I had that was mixto that was deep fried. Yeah. And man I don't know. It could be good maybe but you better know what you're doing. Otherwise it's gonna taste like a big ball of grease. That wasn't one of my favorite ones, but we're going to be doing ours in a skillet. But for our meat stow, let me go ahead and get this going so things will be working while I'm talking. We're going to um, heat up our skillet, and I'm going to put a little bit of oil on here. Uh, and I'm going to fry up some of the ingredients that I'm going to put uh, with my bologna. Now, the bologna I really love has a chincharron in it, oh, chincharron. Or fat back in the yeah. U.S. So it's oh, very, oh, oh. it's like a chewy pork, and it's rich. I don't have chincharron, and I didn't get any chincharron, but here's one thing I, I have been putting in my bologna, and I really like, is a little bit of rib meat, a little bit of pork rib. And uh, we just bought these at a local rib place, and you know, we get enough for us to eat, but then I also get a little bit extra to use in Tigrillo recipes and in my bologna recipes. So I've just got some rib meat, and it doesn't take a lot. In fact, this is probably too much. I could probably use half as much meat as this. And I'm going to try it with just ham. You know, I, I didn't know if I was gonna have any rib meat, so I bought this ham. I'm gonna cube up this ham and make some bolognas. And uh, you know, when I do eventually, I'll put down in the uh, comments whether or not I liked it or not. But that's, a, that's an idea, untested, so you can test it that way if you don't have access to some fancy pants rib meat or uh, chinchon. You know, you could try it with a ham. Just make some cubic cubes about this size 
and then maybe just cook them in a skillet until they get kind of hard and tough maybe cook out a lot of the moisture make them chewy you know that doesn't sound like it would be good you know having overcooked meat in the bologna but i really like that meat flavor and i like the chewiness of the meat as a texture so it's really a textural ingredient I think. but i'm going to go ahead and start uh, my meat you know and my sk skillet is overly hot right now but that's fine because if i burn this that's fine i want to cook this meat down a little bit to get rid of some of the moisture so we'll get going on that and like I said you don't have to uh, put meat in your bologna you can just do it with cheese but I think the meat is muy fantastico now here is something I don't know I don't think that they use garlic in bologna or at least in the bologna that, I, that I've been getting and um, I'm going to because I love garlic. But when I see a bologna, like they have them on display in the windows in a lot of restaurants. You'll go by and they've got like a little glass case. I guess it's like a, it's a warmer, you know, and there'll be like softball sized bologna. And sometimes there are smaller ones and sometimes they don't even have them in a case out front. Uh, but I love the way they look with the blocks of cheese and the meat. So it's going to be kind of a rustic looking bologna. And mine's going to be like that too. But I'm going to add onion and I'm going to add garlic. So we'll see how it works out. But it's I'm all about the flavor. Onion. Yeah. I'm going to throw in my onion with my meat. And I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, cook up for a wee little bit. Now while that is cooking up, I'll go ahead and mash up my bologna. You know, and it's pretty soft right now. Ooh, and kids could help with this part. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you know, if you got strong kids, because, you know, this, this is kind of hard to mash up, but not too hard. But like I said, you want to cook them until they're just like a done potato. But plantain actually has a little more integrity than uh, a potato. So you just didn't want to use a fork? Oh, I'm going to use a fork, but I'm giving myself a head start here. So I'm not having to chase these plantain pits around. Oh, uh, right, right, right. And hopefully, I've got enough plantain here. I've got two plantains about that size here. So we'll see. And I don't know. I just got to make sure I don't have so many ingredients in here that the structural integrity is compromised. But as far as how much plantain you use, you know, you'll figure that out. Because, like I said, there is no hard and fast rule. You know, I've had dozens of bologna already in this town and they've all been different. You just want to make sure the ratio of your other ingredients to your plantain works for you flavor-wise. And then you want to make sure that it's not going to be so much that your plantain won't hold together. But one plantain per person is plenty. I don't know. Well, sure. Big. I mean, sure, food-wise. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely very filling. But as far as the size of your blown, you know, right. depending on how much stuff I have here, you know, I'll either make uh, one giant blown, two reasonable sized blowns, or four blowns that are too small. Because I don't like the small blowns. You know, I think I got a good start on this stuff being mashed up. Now let me come over here, down here into the light. You want to stir around your fork so we can see how exciting this mashing up process is. But yeah, I'll give this a stir. That's a good idea, camera girl. But one of the reasons I'm doing this here is to hopefully make my meat a little chewier and to cook out some of the moisture here, but leave all the flavor. In fact, speaking of flavor, I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of ahi in here, which is kind of a... I don't know, I guess it's the Ecuadorian version of chili powder. It's just a spicy heat ingredient. And Camera Girl really likes it, so I'm gonna throw quite a little bit in there. I'm gonna put some uh, black pepper in here. Let that get going seasoning-wise. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in here too. And I'm not gonna be shy with the salt, and I'll probably put a little bit in the plantain as well. Because like I said, these green plantains are very similar to potatoes. So you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna have a lot of flavor. Now, I've had balloons 
that don't have a lot of flavor. You know, they're just kind of homey, satisfying, and filling. And that's super duper, you know, if that's what you want. But me, I like a lot of flavor. So I'm going to go a little bit crazy with the seasoning. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, mash up my plantains just a wee little bit more here. But I don't want this to be... I don't want it to be so smooth that the plantain doesn't have any texture. No. When we go to restaurants and I get these balloons that I really like, they're not the prettiest balloons. You know, they're not going to win any beauty contest. They look a little lumpy. They look, if a balone had an alcohol problem, they look like that. They look like they have a hard life. It looks a little rough around the edges. It looks like a hobo balone. Plantain dries out. Uh, very quickly and easily and that's why you want to reserve uh, your plantain water in case you want to add that. As you can see my meat is darkening up here. It's ready. It's getting a little bit chewy. Hopefully it's cooking up the onion. Now I'm going to throw my garlic in here and let that go for just a few moments. And you don't have to add onion and you don't have to add garlic but I like as much flavor as possible. So I'm adding it in there. Yeah, you could add herbs. We've had cilantro in it. And I'm not putting any egg in here. So there's not a lot of binder. You're not adding balloon. egg? No, oh. no, no, no egg in your balloon. Oh. Now let me go ahead and uh, look at this here. This is like cement. I'm gonna throw my uh, plantain in the skillet now and get it mixed up and cooking with these other flavors. And it's gonna go back in this bowl once I, once I start to get this stuff mixed up. But as you can see, it's very dry. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my water in here to make it easier to mix up. And then I will cook this water out a little bit. You know, and if I added too much right there, that would be fine too, because I will just cook it until it gets down to a consistency that I like. But I'm thinking this looks pretty good. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I would say it's, it's a little meat heavy. When I get balloons out and about around town, you know, they've, they've got a little bit of meat in them. You know, it makes them satisfying, but they don't have this much meat. Yeah, but chicharron with the fat, it's very rich. And yes. a rib is, I mean, this smoked rib is very good, but I think that's also why they don't have to have as much. It's chicharron is just... Chicharron, yeah. <laughs> Fat back to those of us in the south. All right, so I'm getting it all mixed up here. And I think I got enough moisture in here. So let me add it back into my skillet. Before the cheese, huh? Yeah, 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 because I don't want... Oh, that's true, you don't want it to melt. Yeah, I don't want to add my cheese in here and for my cheese to fall apart or melt or become stringy. I want my cheese to be kind of cubey in with my uh, bologna. And this is the kind of cheese I'm using. Uh, it's just a little bit of uh, cheese with a little bit of oregano in there. So that's kind of flavorful in and of itself. It's kind of a harder cheese. You know, any flavor that you're gonna add to this is only gonna make it better. Let me give it a taste here and see how my salt content is. Well, the cheese is gonna have salt too. That's true. Well, this doesn't feel overly salty. Yeah, you're right, the cheese will have a little bit of salt in it. But I don't think it's crazy salty. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more salt to here. Because like I said, it's kind of like a potato. Now I just got this out of the skillet and put it in here. So it's very hot. <laughs> so my hands, so I want to scream right now. So we'll go <laughs> ahead and we'll cut the video for a moment while I go scream. Well, I think you've got a spatula, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you you can use a spatula, but you're not. You you need to have. You need to form that relationship with uh -huh. your balloon, and you're only going to be able to do that by hand. Actually, it's not too bad. But here, let me show you this here. Now, I've seen balloons around town. I mean, I've I, I've actually got them on a plate, and they're this big. I mean, I've gotten balloons this size, and when I get a balloon this size. Man, I'm happy. 
and I'll eat most of it, but then I'll have a little bit to bring home too. I was going to say, then you're miserable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't want to eat all that, but I think this is going to be good for two reasonably sized balloons. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to it right now, although it might be a mistake, but this cheese is kind of hard. I, I don't think this is like the queso that you get that yeah. you fry up in strips. But you don't want to put the cheese in while it's in the skillet heating up because you want the, the cheese to have a little bit of integrity. Now let me go ahead and smash this around like this here, then I'll use my magic fingers to chop it up and I'll make two kind of even sizes, I hope. And now I'm just going to make a couple of uh, ball shapes. So there's one. Let me see what this other size is going to look like. That's baseball size. That's pretty good. Yeah, that is good. I'm, 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 I'm happy with this. I think, uh, I think we made enough. I was afraid that maybe it was going to be too small, you know, for two balloons, just using two plantains this size. And as you can see, it's pretty smooth. It's not cracked or overly dry. Let's go over here in the, in the good light. I mean, I never dreamed that they would come out this good. I think this is the fifth time I've made them. I don't think I've, I don't think they've looked. They're beautiful. This promising. Every time I've made them though, they've been very tasty. They've been delicious. The first time I made them, uh, they were a little too wet and they didn't hold together as much as I'd like, but they were still delicious. Yes. So I haven't made a bad one yet, although they haven't looked as awesome as these. You know, I'm saying that as words of encouragement. So even if you make these and they don't start out picture perfect like this, it'll probably still taste delicious. And by the time I finish cooking these, you know, they might not be as picture perfect either, but it's still gonna taste great. But the thing is, I think when they make these, they let them sit for a little bit. Cause I don't, I don't think I've ever ordered a blown in a restaurant and they've made it and cooked it and brought it out to me. They usually have them pre-made sitting somewhere. And then when you order a balloon, you know, they, they've got it in a warmer, they've got it in the oven, you know, it's already made and it's kind of solidified and. So let's wait. Cause you're right. There's starch in it and it'll bind it a little bit. Yeah, sure. Trust I, your I, instinct. I, I, think, I think the longer you wait, like if you make these a little bit ahead of time, and then let them sit. It's like cookies or anything, you know, that you shape. If you let it sit for a while and then it, then it builds up that memory. And then when you put it in the skillet, you know, the plantain will, it has such a short memory. It will think it's a ball and it will stay in a ball <laughs> shape. Whereas if you put it in, you know, it might remember this shape and try to revert back to this here. But if camera girl can wait for a little bit. Let's do it. Then we'll wait and let our balls just hang out for a little bit. You know, not in that way, but you know what I mean. All right, so it has been a couple of hours, a podcast or so ago. So let me start heating up my skillet. Let me go ahead and put a little bit more oil in here, and then I'll tell you about our strategy. Our strategy is... This is Buck's strategy. <laughs> we got these two big old balloons, but we really only need to eat one of these. So I'm just going to cook one and then we'll split it and then we can go out and get some coffee and dessert. Because a day in Ecuador without going out for uh, coffee and dessert, well, I mean, that's not much of a day. That's any time we travel. Yeah. That's I mean, your, we're here in that's Ecuador. Your philosophy. I mean, we're in the Andes Mountains. There's jungle. There's flowing rivers. <laughs> there's llamas and anacondas and jaguars and what? who knows what. And so we got to make sure and get out into the world and uh, get some coffee and uh, oreja. Orejas? I think so. Yeah, we're going to get a coffee and pastry. So I'm just going to cook up one of these. And one of these I'll put in the fridge and then we'll cook it up later for tomorrow. And like I said, we've had these deep fried as well, but we don't like them. But it's cooked. I mean, everything's cooked. The meat's already cooked. The plantains are already cooked. So I could eat this just like an apple. You know, the world's most surprising apple. I could eat it just like that. But, you know, it's already cooked. I'm just getting, I'm just frying it just for the friedness of it. So we'll get going with it right here. And you can see um, that, it's, that it's probably going to be fine. It seems like it's doing all right, you know, um, as far as its structural integrity goes. But that's all I'm going to do. 
is just I'm just going to roll it around in the skillet until the outside of it uh, gets nice and fried and uh, crispy around the edges. And while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and uh, slice an avocado. A lot of times uh, when we see these in restaurants, they are served uh, with a little bit of avocado and an egg. And sometimes, especially if it's a cheese bologna, you know, you know, they might serve it with a side of meat, but you know, we've got the meat in here, so that's all we need. I don't know what it is about eating around food. Maybe it appeals to the child in me. What are some other good round foods? I think you like how big it is. I do like how big it is because uh -huh. I, I don't want to go somewhere and order the, uh, the smaller version. Uh, I like the novelty of the shape of this food. And again, you know, once you start eating it, you know, it, it doesn't stay round. Even All with right. it being room temperature, I don't know that it isn't going to take a few more minutes to uh, heat up the middle of this one. Oh, it's going to be fine. You're going to have to trust your boyfriend. All right, how's that looking, Cam Girl? You think we had enough color on there? Ooh, it looks good. It smells delicious. I think so, too. That looks perfect. Now, I can keep doing it. I could keep cooking it for a little bit more, but I think this is going to be plenty good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the skillet. Too hot to pick up. So let me do it like this here. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. Let's see, let me go ahead and cook these eggs up here. All righty. Ah! Does that look perfecto? Yes. Now this here is a very filling breakfast, and I love it, but uh, we're actually gonna split this. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Alrighty, doesn't that look picture perfect? I gotta tell you, this is the best looking bologna I've made that has been this size. Okay, well your battery is at 9%, so 9%. take a bite. Okay. 8%. So I'm gonna do my taste test right here. Oh. Yeah, 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 let's let see it, it. So that people can see. Oh, but I'm gonna cut it in half too, and as you can see. It's okay. It's just a ball of plantain and there's plenty of meat in here and other flavors. Does it taste as good as it looks? Mm-hmm. Yes. Because I'm, I put a lot of flavor in here. I like getting these out at restaurants. It's so homey and filling and flavorful, especially when they serve it with an egg. It's just a great little breakfast. Sometimes they don't have as much flavor as this, but it's still good. So you can pack as much flavor as you want. It definitely tastes a little bit different having the rib meat in here than when we get it out and it's got the chincharron. You know, then it's a very, it's very flavorful, but it's got a nice chewy texture, which this doesn't have as much of because the rib meat isn't going to have that same chewiness. But as you can see, you know, it doesn't stay in a ball shape for long once you start eating it. Um, you didn't so, put your sauce on it from your egg. I like getting a an egg that's got a runny yolk. Look how golden and beautiful it yes. is. Yes. Then that's a great flavor with that. You'd go ahead, it's at 5%. Okay, Do at your 5%. ending, babe. So uh, that's it. Uh, I have the lip recipe written out. You can go over to myfoodchannel.com, uh, check it out. Uh, thanks for watching and subscribing, to blah, blah, blah. We got a Patreon. We got all kinds of stuff. Give it a try at home and let me know what you think. You don't have to make them this big, make them small. Bye bye. Oh, you, is it still going? Barely. Okay, I'm trying to get your taste test in here. Why do I have to be in a you hurry? Got a because you said it's at, uh, oh, we got 4%. Take your time. Boom, boom, boom. Mm. Mm hmm.